And wow we would you look at that. That is the backbone of the 6.4, ladies and gentlemen. That is what makes the magic happen. I, to me, I don't think there's anything prettier than that. Look at that, man. Dual turbo setup, sequential turbos. This is where the exhaust comes in from the engine and splits into the two turbos. Uh, you got variable geometry on the on the secondary turbo, and then the primary turbo is a standard turbocharger. The smaller turbo is used to spin the engine up, okay? It's actually used to, to make the engine get going, and then the big turbo here with the variable geometry part kicks in as you're going uh, to give you optimal boost. So this, this turbo is the best of both worlds. It's actually a combination of a 7.3 turbo and a 6.0 turbo. See, the 6.0 turbo... Uh, down low, down at the low RPMs was outstanding, but it would run out of uh, boost at the high end. This was the answer to fix that. Uh, of course, it's heavily uh, electronically controlled. Um, they went away from the, uh, and the variable geometry system. They went away from the, uh, uh, the uh, hydraulically actuated system of the 6.0 and went to the, this manual electronic system that's you know, got a plug in here that comes from the computer to tell us it what to do. Uh, but this is a fantastic system, and it just makes me happy to look at it. I mean, that's fantastic, incredible, absolutely amazing. And this, without this, the 6.4 wouldn't make half the power that it makes. This is the key to making power. And on the 6.0, we can see it on top of the engine here. This is the variable geometry part of it and the oil that runs into it. And the 6.4, it dominates the whole top of the engine. I mean, it's the whole shooting match on top here. Uh, we can see... Uh, how the uh, the uh, exhaust comes in from the back and and runs the turbo from the back here. This is where this is where the uh, exhaust comes in and runs the the two turbines, which sequentially run the, uh, the 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 compressors and make the boost. Pretty sophisticated. And then your, your exhaust system comes from here and goes out. All of the exhaust exits uh, out this one side. Now I'm going to talk about the failures that we've seen in all of these engines, and then. Uh, uh, talk about the modifications that can be done to them to, to make sure that these failures don't happen. Um, 7.3, there's not a heck of a lot that goes wrong with them. I mean, uh, if you get some water in your fuel tank, you're going to see some fuel injector failures. Of course, as they get high in miles and whatnot, you see little O-ring failures and things like this. Uh, the the 7.3, in its simplicity, in its tried and true designs, uh, uh, just doesn't have failures. I mean, they just don't fail. I mean, other than the camshaft sensor, which they've now fixed, there really wasn't a whole lot that would mess up on them. Uh, a few sensors in front. Like, they just don't screw up. They can take a tremendous amount of heat. Of course, they don't make as much power as the later model stuff. But you know what? It'll be there when you're ready. Um, as long as the fuel is clean and you do the service procedures on this engine, it, there's no reason why it can't go three, four, five hundred thousand miles. 6.0 has been a challenge uh, from the beginning, being a clean sheet uh, design, I guess. Uh, they didn't have the, the fuel injection system like the 7.3 is basically a cat design to call upon, so they had to start over. Now, as a result, uh, the customers early on became part of the design team and, and had to send their truck back many times to get it straightened out. Um, the biggest thing on a 6.0, other than service procedures and clean fuel, of course, is that the head gaskets are unstable. If you want to make, and I'm going to go on the record to say this, that if you want to make a 6.0 be reliable for long term, uh, you need to put head studs in it. It's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Uh, and when it goes down, it's going to be when you're on your, uh, on your dream vacation going over the Continental Divide, pulling your 38-foot fifth wheel. It's going to blow a head gasket. If you do the head gaskets preventatively and don't let it get to the point where it puts you by the side of the road, uh, you will save yourself a tremendous amount of extra money in terms of oil cooler, EGR cooler, and whatnot. Uh, the other thing on a 6.0, uh, after you do your head gaskets, exhaust helps, the elimination of the catalytic converter, and tuning. Uh, uh, and I use Jody at DP Tuner exclusively because I have seen tremendous results out of what he does. Uh, the combination of those three things. And then the last thing is to block the EGR cooler. I have that, that in the section that's going to be up here soon on the uh, Master Mechanic series. It's going to be accessible to show how to block the existing EGR cooler. And don't buy one of those ridiculous expensive kits because you can do it for uh, uh, a very, very uh, small amount, a couple dollars is all it costs to do it. And some 
and some elbow grease. But, you know, if you're willing to do a little work or have someone do a little work for you, it will eliminate the heat coming in from the EGR cooler and getting into the coolant and raising the engine temperatures. Um, that's the downfall to the 6.0. Again, as long as you have clean fuel, you keep your oil changed, you do the service procedures as they're supposed to be done, use correct Ford filters. These are excellent engines. I mean, I've got several out there that are knocking on 400,000 miles now, and they've had relatively little problems. Uh, stock transmissions, stock engines, stock injectors, um, they've just done the things that they're supposed to do. And they. But the key to making those engines go is that uh, all of the engines, and there's about a dozen in total that... Uh, we, we have out on the road that have that many miles on them. Go back again to the key. The key is stabilizing the head gasket because you're introducing that heat all the time into the coolant and it starts to break down engine parts. So if you're going to have a six liter and you intend to keep it for a long time, uh, don't trade it in. Nobody will give you anything for it, you figure. Uh, then you ought to go ahead and spend the money, uh, if not with me, but then with somebody, to get your head gaskets and your ARP studs installed so that the engine will run uh, correctly and effectively for a long time to come. It's absolutely imperative if you intend to use the truck to do that. On the 6.4, uh, you know, it hasn't been out as long as these others, so there's, there's not as much, we don't have as much experience with them. But the engine is greatly improved over the 6.0 in terms of the fuel system, in terms of your head gaskets, in terms of no high pressure oil system, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. The dual turbo system is incredible. The big downfall of this engine is the emissions control. Emissions control is what has, has made this engine be problematic. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, DPF system, when they, when they go into regen, you actually uh, have a situation where the uh, fuel injectors will inject fuel on the exhaust stroke, forcing huge amounts of heat through the turbochargers, out through the exhaust system, to burn off the carbon that is trapped in this particulate filter vector. And by doing this, the engine temperatures are raised so dramatically that we uh, uh, and if there's a malfunction anywhere in the system, uh, we've seen burn-up pistons, we've seen uh, damaged turbochargers. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, the other, that's one side of the issue. The other side of the issue is, is that the, other, the reason why this engine gets so dismally poor fuel economy, uh, you know, I've heard it as low as seven, I know a few people out there getting 12, but I mean the 6 liter will get 15, 16, 7, 3 will get 15, 16, 17, 18 if you tune it. I mean, I, I know folks that have proper uh, uh, stock, and I know folks that have tuning on both those engines to get well over 20. I have an excursion with a 7.3, it gets 23 miles a gallon, it's two-wheel drive. Uh, I know uh, I have a couple of customers with two-wheel drive 6 liters that, that are uh, at 20. Uh, of course, when you put a trailer on it, it drops, but you know, 20, 19 to 20 all day long. So the emissions control on this engine, on the 6.4, by doing the EGR system, by using this EGR system uh, to meet emissions control has uh, greatly diminished the fuel economy. So it, that's a real problem. This engine is an incredible engine, though. And, and that's the sad thing, is they've got this fantastic engine with all this crap attached to it. Uh, to meet emissions and uh, you know it's it's a federal government mandate so that we can breathe clean air and our kids can breathe clean air and all you know too bad we won't have any social security for them but they'll be breathing clean air uh, but that's a different conversation the uh, 